Hello. Oh, y'all, y'all didn't be. You weren't here to see it. <laughs> okay, we live. Praise God. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you all for making it out. Welcome our Facebook family. We again invite you out to worship and fellowship and learn with us here in person so you can receive some of the spirit that we just did. I don't know if you can see. My eyes are all red and teary because <laughs> the spirit was moving in this place. So come get some so you don't be left out in your, in your walk every day. Um, we have been studying the kingdom of God and power and demonstration and along with that the Holy Spirit. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit we just covered last week and we'll continue on tonight. So we thank the Lord for putting this message in our pastor's heart so that he can share it with us and we can have power filled in our lives and not feel like we have been left alone. Amen. So with that, let's stand to our feet. Let's give our pastor a warm welcome and bring him down. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We'll give Jesus a hand clap. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You guys here who are in the audience can truly be sitting down in the presence of the Lord. When you ask the Holy Spirit to join you, and he will join you. Remember, he's sensitive, but he's waiting. He's waiting for an invitation. Most people don't have the presence of the Lord in service because they ignore him. That's what he means by grieving him. First, you grieve him personally, and then you can grieve him corporately. You know, that's why I do not stifle the Holy Spirit. That's why I let it go after praise and worship. I'm like, I ain't going to stifle that. I asked for the Holy Spirit to begin to praise and worship what? To release himself. So therefore, you allow him to do what he needs to do. It's a seed. It's a water. And sometimes it's a big harvest. Amen. 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 Well, praise God. Welcome to Facebook Live. Like uh, Sister Marion said, we have been doing a series on the Spirit in power, or the kingdom in power, because the kingdom comes in power and demonstration. Um, and we're continuing on. Before that, we got an announcement. I uh, will be, like I said, I talked about this before. I'll be having a men's conference at Antioch Church of God in Christ. The address is up there, 9600 West Peoria. If you're in the local area, please come out. It's from 8 a.m. to 12. That would be uh, not this Saturday, but next, the following Saturday coming. So come on out with the men, trying to teach men how to be men. If you're a lost man, what most of them are, because each man claims his own goodness, but God says, what? A faithful man, who can find? If God is putting that question out there, then you know that there's not too many faithful men that he can depend on. That's why in the Old Testament, you don't see him, he only dealt with so many people. He didn't deal with the, the masses, because they're not faithful. Now, they'll come in 10, but they won't be faithful. So God picked out people who were faithful men. You know, they weren't perfect men. Watch this. They were what? Faithful man. God's not looking for a perfect man. He's looking for faithful man. You know, I can count on you. He, I call him up, he's gonna do this. I can count on Abraham, he's gonna go and do this. I can count, see that's what he's looking for. Faithful. He know you ain't my perfection because you got, you know, a, a fallen nation, but can you be faithful? Can you stick to your word? Whatever you say you're gonna do, just do it. It's so hard to find that. Here's another thing. In Proverbs 25 and 2, matter of fact, we're talking about it right here. It says right here, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing. But the glory of kings is to search things yeah. out. Now, who, what kings are you talking about? Who is that? That would be us, right? Kings and queens. It is up to us. God said, it's my glory that I hide things away from everybody. Watch this. But it's the glory of kings to search them out. The reason why it's the glory for us to search them out is because he didn't hide it from us. He hid it for us. That's why it's such glory for the kings to go seek it out. He says, God, I got some mysteries, I got some secrets, and some hidden stuff that's just for those who come and seek me out. Those who are mine. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. What does the Lord mean? Honor. What does it mean? Honor. Honor. Okay. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. That's the kind of father, heavenly father that we have. He says, your ways are nowhere in the ballpark. Now, this is why God gave us a manual. But since your thinking and your fallen nature sometimes, even though you're a new creature in Christ, you still have a fallen nature that contends with you, which is your flesh. He says, your ways are not mine. So therefore, I give you my ways. I give you my way, my truth, and my life in this manual we call it right here. This is the manual. Um, God's knowledge is complete. Here's the truth. Here's the truth for you. God's knowledge is complete. 
It is absolute and is always true. What's the problem? Well, human knowledge is we have to discover it. That's why they're still searching and digging in rocks and looking behind stuff and out there in space. They're trying to discover something. It's partial. God says that we look between, we look in the glass as darkly as unclean. Even though I, God gave me revelation, he says, I'm giving you just a little. He says, it's like you wipe your hand a little bit and you get past some dirt spot. And I can peek into the window in the rim. I'm like, oh, man, look at that revelation. God says, you got it, Hugh. But guess what? God says, you ain't got the fullness of it because we look behind a, a dirty glass when he gives it to us. Partial. And it depends on God's revelation. This is why God never thinks nobody say, I, I can do anything all by myself. Like, no, God says, without me, you can do absolutely nothing. I'm the divine, you the branches. Without me, you can't do it. You need God. I, I'm crying out to the world right now. You need God. <laughs> we all need God. A fish needs water. A bird needs to fly. And a human needs the presence of God. Amen. Without it, we lost. We're doing just like the fish. We're flopping. That's why you see everybody flopping. What you hearing everybody? Let me see how they're flopping. I ain't flopping. I'm, I'm okay. Really? I can't sleep at night. Flopping. I take anxiety medicine. Flopping. You know? <laughs> you know? I ain't never seen so many people who can't deal with it. every day. Just get up, wake up, sunrise, <coughs> sunfall, and they can't deal with 24 hours. Never in our day we have seen such. And you see people right now, they can't handle that. I can't handle life. Satan did this. He has built America is, is, is warped. People are freaked out about waking up and just living natural life. The best things in life is still free. The best thing in life is still free. Sun, water, <laughs> light, <laughs> you know, walking on ground. God already gave you a body, which is your car, gave you a free car. You know, <laughs> they're all free. God gave you this. It's about the grace of God He gave you this stuff. So anything else that somebody put before you and says, oh, yeah, but you're not really, you ain't really living it unless you go on the vacation. And you ain't really living it. Man, don't be listening to that stuff. I see people going on these fancy vacations more stressed out than you steal. All they did was spend a whole bunch of money, post some pictures, and come back still looking sadder than you are. See, don't fall for what we call my country version of the okie doke. <laughs> the kind of devices of the enemy. So don't do it. Don't do it. It's a trap. I want you to realize we only believe what God says about us. I got to get you to that. That's where my confidence comes from. I listen to nobody or nothing unless God says, what did God say about me? What did God say about you? He's always going to say good things. Well, it says all human knowledge is discovered and partial and depends on God's revelation. God says, I'm going to build you up how? By what? Revelation. How we are supposed to move on this earth is by wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You need these. You need a rhema word. That's a word for right now. You need the guidance of the Holy Spirit, what we've been talking about right now. This is how you're supposed to move. And God's going to reveal some things to you as you start this movement. The, hills, the Holy Spirit said he's going to show you things known and unknown. That's called revelation. He's going to reveal some things to you. So this is why we want to get to know him, fellowship. You need to talk to him. You know, you, it's like you ride, you say, hey, we're going to ride from here to Cal uh, California, it's five hours. And me and you don't say nothing to each other. Well, some of you guys commute to work. Do you talk to the Holy Spirit? You ignore him. You ignore him. That's why I told you, you swear, like Jesus told you, like he said, it's good that I leave, guys. You're like, wait a minute, you've been giving me food, talking to disciples. You've been taking care of my every need, and you tell me that's going to be good? But I'm going to send back another one just like me. Because people always talk about, oh man, I wish I was in the days of Jesus. You are even better than that. You got Jesus with you now. And yet you ignore him. You ignore him. So we can't, we got to realize what's going on. You talk to the Holy Spirit. Don't quit playing your favorite music. It's probably worldly anyway. On the way to work and start talking to the Holy Spirit. All the way. For when you get to work and somebody get ready to pounce you, you'll be ready for it. That's what I used to do. They used to meet me at the door, acting crazy. I'm like, man, I can't even get my brief. What the, what's going on here, you know? But since I was praying in the Spirit, something else we're going to talk about tonight, because I was spending time with the Holy Spirit, fellowship, and put some worship music on, getting His presence. And I'm going to take that presence out of that car, and I'm going to my office. And you'll be ready. But you sitting around here listening to all your crazy favorite stuff from the world, man, it's going to be compound interest by the time they hit you up with some craziness. This is the life that believers are supposed to live. God told you, I'd never leave you or forsake you. That's why when you got anxiety at work, and my work just stressing me out, because you didn't bring the presence. <laughs> That's why.
That's the only reason you stressed. You can't be stressed and then go at the same time. You know, I didn't say you wouldn't save because that's all you think about. When you talk about saving, I told you, I was talking to my brothers this morning about some of the things I say. Most people look at my, me and my wife like we, we, we got something special going on. I said, the only thing we do is we believe God and we believe his word. I said, you know what they do when they hear that? They translate that, oh, I go to church too. I said, that ain't what I said. I said, I believe God <laughs> and I believe his word, <laughs> you know. And they'll say, oh, I go to church too. And they're like, ah, oh, you see, you missed it. You can go to church and not believe God or his word, <laughs> you know. So that's not the same thing. So you got to get your religion. So Satan does that. He, he just blinds the mind. So when you hear word and situation, you're thinking, oh, yeah, I've already been that. I've already done that. But you don't know. I mess with you. You hear somebody like me start preaching. I start talking about the end game, the result. You know, the reason the only reason you're doing that is for transformation for this. Where is it? Where's your evidence? See, and then I put pressure on like, well, well, everybody ain't got it. I'm like, well, that's the whole point you did it. That's like going to the gym for 20 years and not losing one pound. See? Transformation, you know, be ye what? He told you what the purpose was. By what? Renewing your mind with the word of God. That's why we come here. We ain't come here to say, oh, last year I'm the same as I was the year before. No. Be ye transformed. <laughs> Twelve months, we meet four times a month here at least, sometimes five. And me and my wife had calculated how many times it was. I say, but I expect even just from that limited amount of time that you're not the same you was the year before. Now, that's up on your ground. You can't be that. Because Satan will make sure he hates mature people who know who they are in Christ, what they can do, what's this. Uh, he don't want that ever to be found out. Now, he'll let you go to church forever. He can care less about that. He, he know they ain't going to do nothing to my kingdom. Go to church. Who cares? You know, because a church is not going to take out God's kingdom. Only a kingdom. A person who made in the image of God, who knows who they are, operating in God's kingdom of light system, can do damage to the kingdom of darkness. Not just a person who goes to church. That's not going to do anything. He's not no religion. Okay, enough of that. I've been beating that horse. Without God, we cannot. Say it with me. Without God, we cannot. Without us, he will not. You know how hard for a lot of people believe that? This statement right here throws in the face of God's in control. That right there. God's in control. That, that, that statement right there. St. Augustine said it. It's not a scripture that says that, but all scripture says that. Get me? <laughs> he said, <laughs> have you ever seen God do anything without man? No. Matter of fact, every time you get ready to do something, he says, so, uh, should I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? And he brings him in. Hey, Abraham, you see, it's come up here on his mouth. You see those two cities, Sodom and Gomorrah? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about tearing them up. What do you think about that? And Abraham, he intercedes and says, hold up, hold up, God. <laughs> you know, what well, if you can find so many righteous? And he, he, he negotiated, he get down to about one. And he lets him go into the sea and he changed God's mind. God waited for him. You know? But that's what we are. We're interceding. See? We come down here and intercede for the people who laugh at us. Why they come to Wednesday night every night? We're still interceding for you. We're praying for you. We already know Satan's doing a number on your, on your mind. You need this. You know? And then you look at me, well, I ain't taking no pills. You know why? Because the kingdom of God is what? It's supposed to be what? It says joy, righteousness, peace, and what? Joy. This is what he means by everyone is looking to try to get in the kingdom of God. Because what are they looking for? They're looking for righteousness, peace, and joy. Where they find that? Happy hour, pills, anxiety medicine. See, that's what they're trying to get. God says, you're seeking it, but you're seeking it in the wrong place. As you say, you're looking for love in what? Oh. All the wrong places. That's what he, you designed to do. He knew. He says, every, I'm like, what do you mean, God? Ain't nobody seeking the kingdom. He says, oh, I get it. You, you know too much about the kingdom. I, you know what I'm saying? He says, no, the things that come with the kingdom, that's what they're seeking. See, that's what they're seeking. They want, that, they want that joy. They want to be happy. They want to be like, man, they want peace. That's why they can't sleep. I, I, man, I ran to so many people now. Our people are taking uh, <laughs> sleeping pills, young, because they can't sleep. Why? Tormented by the stuff that they're watching and seeing and they soul. I'm like, God, help me, Lord Jesus. Oh, I've been I spent time. I say I'm ready to preach tonight. Without God, we cannot. Say it with me again. Without God, God we cannot. And without, without us, us, He will not. See, He said, "I'm the vine; you're the branches. Outside of me, you cannot do anything." But with me, with God, what? 
I can do what? There you go. See, I told you it's not verbatim in the scripture, but it's in there. All scripture says that. <laughs> you know, it's saying that every time. You never see God actually interacting with anybody. Uh, uh, I mean, doing anything on this earth without people. For one reason, we already know why, because God says, let man have dominion over the earth. You know, and, and that's why he needs us to pray. I'm like, do we ever meditate on that? Why God needs us to pray? Because we know he's omniscient, omnipresent. You know, he can do anything he wants to do. We you need my prayers for? Why don't you just do it, Lord? See, he needs our prayers. You know, that's why it says the prayers of a righteous man. What? Availing much. He's telling you what your prayers are doing. So man should what? Pray what? Oh, without ceasing. Always praying. See? Why? Because he needs them. He, he needs your prayers. He says, you're giving me permission to act on your behalf upon the earth when you pray. This is why we pray. We got to know God's ways. For what some do not believe, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? <laughs> God forbid. Let God be true and let what? Every man be what? At why watch this, and this one we get them, because this one we stick. When it comes as it is written, <laughs> you know, this is where we're going to get them. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified, they said, and they mightest overcome when thou art judged. You only gonna judge me according to the word, because we're gonna stick to the word. I'm saying the word says this. What do you say? You know, you know what they say? They don't say it's not written. They say, I just don't believe it's saying that. Alright. Let me turn it somewhere else. Right here it says it again. You know, and then they go like that's why God because God says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, the word will be so if you find it twice, it's an established word. If it's not, it's just a one time incident, something just happened. But once God established his word, he says, in all words has been established in heaven. So if you don't believe it down here on earth, he said, I don't care on our record. This is what counts, and this is what we're going to stick to. Because God is what? Forever watches over his what? His word to make sure what? I don't know why nobody want to do the word. This is the only thing God's going to do. I, I, I don't get that. I don't get time for the word. I don't study the word. I'm, I'm like, dude, God only going to do his word. Yeah, but I just believe in God's going to. Do this in my life. Like, where's the word that he's going to do? He's looking for some word in you that he can bring to pass inside of you. Word. Where's the word at? That's why he says, hide the word where? Exactly. For you can, he can do the word in your heart. Because when you speak something, he says, all the abundance of your heart, what? The mouth speaks. And when the wild mouth speaks, you're producing things in your life. You confess your mouth, believe in your heart. I shall decree a thing and it shall what? Because you're going to have it in your heart. And God's going to bring it to pass. He says, that word that you put in your heart is my obligation as a king. Ooh, speak it out by faith. I have to obey what you just spoke. And death and power, life is the power of the tongue. People don't get that. We're made in the image of God. But you got to meditate and start believing this stuff, not just knowing it. Tonight, I want you guys to hear me. Now, just listen. Hearing is, is, is talking about when you're actually going to actually apply it to your life. I was talking about before they had GPS and you asked for directions, you'd be right there. Hold on, let me get a piece of paper. You got a piece of paper? Why? Because you know without those instructions, I'm about to get lost. Amen. Well, that's the way you're supposed to hear tonight. Tonight, I want you to hear something. I want, I want you to hear logos, the written word, or the word I might speak plainly that's written, or rhema. God will give you a word for right now about what you're going through, Okay. Then there's revelation. There's something that you already know, but God's going to shed some more light on it, illuminate it, and give you more revelation about that. But guess how this works, God? It works by faith. It works by expectation. It works by hunger and thirst. And if you don't have your ground ready to receive that type of stuff, the Holy Spirit will like, Whew, he's floating. Who wants, he wants revelation? Who wants rhema? Who wants, he's looking, he's looking. And if he don't find it, he's going, Whew, Come back to his house. I'm telling you guys, it's up to us. I'm telling you, we don't need in my tip two. He says one put a thousand to flight. What? Two put what? We don't need no big crowd. We just need somebody who is hungry and thirsty for more of this stuff. And God will show up and show, He would show, He would turn this place out. I'm telling you. But we gotta get there. Right now, I love you guys. So I ain't even talking to you guys because you guys have been faithful. I can even feel your energy when you come here now. Y'all got expectations. Y'all looking forward to the word. Got your notebooks out. I praise God for you guys. God's going to show up and show out. In these last days, I know you're going to see the glory of the God in your lives because of that. 
Because you guys are learning. He is downloading some stuff through us. Watch this. We are here also to learn what? God's way, God's truth, and God's life. Uh, I wish I learned this earlier. I never learned. I was in church for years, and I never knew God's way. I knew the word was true, but I didn't have too much of that either. And I definitely know the life that God had really planned out for me already. I know the plan that I have for you. You know, I didn't know God had a plan. I didn't know I had an assignment. I didn't know God wanted, you know, me to have this uh, different type of life with, with expectation, you know, continuous, you know, from you know, from glory to glory to faith to faith. You'll say those scriptures, but you didn't think like, that ain't my life. That's just something that you say with the scriptures, right? <laughs> Am I the only one? Oh, me, oh, my. <laughs> but you guys been tall enough. Y'all know better. So I'm always bringing you there, telling you about the kingdom and who you are. So you guys not like me, but it took me 20 years to learn this. <laughs> so now I'm trying to make sure that you guys have a better spot than I did and wasting time. Don't waste your time. Girl, I got stuff for you to do. You have a son. So we're here to where God's way to us, truth, and God's life. It's time to sow to the kingdom. 1 Corinthians 4 and 2 said this, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found what? Faithful. See, all God, I told you, all the thing God wants for us is the same thing he, he is. He's trying to get you to become, become like your daddy. Become like your daddy. Become like, it says God is faithful. And he says, okay, you become faithful. All right? So God says, uh, uh, just like Jesus says, and Jesus is faithful over the house. See? Are you faithful over your house? See what I'm saying? God just wants you to become him. That's why he said in the garden, he made man his image, he made his likeness, and he, he blessed them and told them, now be fruitful and multiply. And the other translation means, go become yourself. <laughs> what I just originally desired you to be, go and become yourself. You know, they use this sermon. Do you not know in the garden? Man, I could preach all night. Uh, in the garden, they, uh, when uh, they sin. Because, you know, in humans, humans have discovered some things like this. says we only use what? 5% of our brain. A very small amount. The other 95% was shut down when we sin. Tonight I'm talking to you about, not tonight, because we're doing a two-part series on speaking in tongues and the mysteries behind speaking in tongues. All, in other things, all things inclusive of what happens when you speak in tongues. That's next week. <laughs> okay. Tonight we're going to talk about the four different types of tongues. All right, four different types where people confuse themselves, but and, and the power and demonstration. But just a little hint to let you know: if our brains were shut down from sin, little insight: when you speak in tongues, it's raised back up. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. I told you guys a long time ago: if Satan is fighting it so hard, it's important. It is important. You have never seen so much fault so hard than this, this subject right here about being baptized in the Spirit and speaking in tongues. Why? Because it's the most important thing that can damage his kingdom. That's why he fights so hard. You know, of course, we're talking about giving right now. That's going to be another one he fights because he wants the, work, the church to be broke in the end times. He doesn't want you to have no influence. But anyways, watch this. Do not live for yourself treasures in the earth only, God says, where moth and rust can destroy, where thieves can break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth rust and destroys, and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. This is Matthew 6, 19 and 21. Now you know in Matthew 6, 33, Jesus tell you, don't do this stuff. He says, but do this. You see, he says, lay your stuff in the invisible realm. When you sow, your stuff goes into the invisible realm also where you have access to it. But Matthew 6, 33 tells you, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. What are you doing? How do you seek the kingdom of God? Well, one thing you have to learn God's way. It's an operation. The kingdom of God is the operation. The kingdom of heaven is the country you're from. God brings his government down on earth called the kingdom of God. So that's how you operate. That's one of his ways. His way for finances is to give. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake together. He wants you to always continue to learn to give for you have need. That's why I say when you, people are always using these half scriptures about it. And I know my God shall supply all my needs according to the riches. I say before that what it says. Be, and I know since you have given. Because you have given, we know that my God shall supply all your needs according to the riches of glory. See, Pastor won't let you get away with that. That's the kind of ignorance I grew up in. And you're going to get frustrated, mad, bored, and it not work, and you're going to walk away from the church. But I won't let you be. I will not have you ignorant, my brother or my sister. Okay? All things being what? Equal. You got to be equal with it. You can't just do half scriptures around here. You got to do the full content of the scripture. 
Because you give, God says, I, I know my father's plow your knees. They only quote one part. Philippians 3, 18, same thing they be doing, 3, 13, whatever, 4, 13, what do you call it? It got another scripture there, like, you pull it up, and they just print it on a t-shirt, hat, and run with it. But if you go into context on there, you'll see another part. <laughs> and it usually has to do with us. You know, <laughs> we love God's part. Yeah, God, do your thing. Do your thing. And God's like, yeah, do your thing. <laughs> Do your thing. <laughs> and you're like, oh, God, you, you, you do your thing, God. You do your thing. <laughs> and he go back to you. He's going to toss the ball back. No, no, no. You, you, you do your thing. You do your thing. <laughs> you know? When God says, when you do your thing, I'm going to do my thing. And say, so whatever you lock up, it's going to be locked up. And whatever you release will be released. See? You're going to have to do some stuff here. But nobody likes those scriptures. But I'll bring them out because I was lost. I'm like, this is not working. He says, go back and read. I'm like, oh. They didn't tell me, like reading the manual. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't tell me that. <laughs> Got me all hype. <laughs> I don't do hype. I do practical instructions and righteousness. Let's go. Ways to give if you want to give to F Hour Ministry. Tie off the envelopes. My wife has some tonight. You can go to F Hour Ministry online and hit fhourministry.org and hit I support a great minister that's trying to get the kingdom message out. Um, let's stand to our feet. You guys do a great job here in the local area. Get so the people online. You want to start sowing and getting blessed? Come on, we're going to decree. I said decree a thing and what? You said what? Come on, let's do it. As we sow today's offering, we believe the Lord for gifts and surprises, finding money, death paid off, checks in the mail, expense decrease, blessings and increase. Jobs and better jobs, raises, bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, create and return. Come on. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs that I have had more than enough to give unto the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Give God a hand clap. It is worship time. The Lamb. It's being told to the temple. You may be seated. All right. I just came off vacation. Me and my lovely wife. Well, I ain't going to call it a vacation. That actually was a missionary journey. <laughs> Praise God for the salvation, reconciliation of the family. I hope family back home is uh, actually lift, uh, listening in right now. Because we really want you to get an understanding of what, God, what God's all about. Don't let Satan throw you off by uh, false doctrines, uh, uh, some you know bad pastors. They're not all perfect. Uh, but God has something for you. If you, He said, here's the promise I said, though. If you hunger and thirst for more righteousness, yeah. you will be fulfilled. He'll get it to you. I told my wife, I said, you know, I remember sometimes I go into churches that they wouldn't feed me nothing. But I'll turn on the radio, a Christian radio, and I get my word on the way to the church. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm hungry. I want to eat. He said, I'll get it to you. He's a miracle worker, way maker, miracle worker, <laughs> promise keeper. See, you just got to be hungry. And thirsty for the things of God. You have no excuse when you come to him. When you go to God, you can better say that stuff. We go, yeah, I wouldn't go, but you know, oh, the church, I found that the church did that. They're doing that. That ain't, that ain't going to cut it. Uh-uh. I never use that. Like, no, I'm hungry, God. You you say it. I said, Father, you say it. You say it. Ain't. I got you. I got you. All right, got my answers. I get mine. So don't be playing around with that stuff. That is not an excuse. Now, people out here would say, yeah, man, you're right, too, man. I heard that, too. That's why I don't go. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, now when you get before God, ain't going to cut it. <laughs> All right? Praise God. We've been doing a series on God, the Holy Spirit, and it's been awesome. Hasn't it been awesome, guys? Yes. yes. I've been getting a lot of feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, people love, love this, this series. I love it, too. God's changing me from doing it. We have learned about God, the Holy Spirit. We learned about his nature. We learned about his purpose. We learned about his work and the fruit that he produces in our lives. Um, we learned about his voice, which took about four sessions. And I still didn't exhaust it because I didn't get into a whole bunch of stuff. And we might overlap and then we start talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We'll talk about it more. Um, we talked about being filled, baptized, and baptized by fire. Wasn't that good teaching last week? Yeah. Showing you like how people say, I got all the Holy Spirit I got right here. And you show you how I poured the chocolate in the milk and the milk, the chocolate cell at the bottom. And that was the Holy Spirit. You are. You sealed. You have been what? But we're going to call that. I'll get to the message. We'll tell you what we call that. But anyway, the next one we're talking about today is praying in the spirit, speaking in tongues. The most controversial thing that has ever been talked about. First of all, praying all together has been controversial. 
You know what I'm saying? It's just regular prayer. All religions pray, don't they? You know, all religion, every religion prays to some type of deity, God, whatever, their versions. And then here we go when God says, I'm going to give you a perfect way to pray. Then they go come and mess with that. When I ain't say that, it's Satan coming. He's an altar of confusion, you know, and they come and confuse that. The thing about it is when he gets some of God's people to join in to get his agenda going. That's what makes it so crazy because it, from one church to another, these denominations, man, uh, Believe, it confused the unbelievers. The unbelievers like, well, that church don't believe in that. You know, so, and he said, you know, the reason they don't do that and all this kind of stuff, this kind of stuff we have to deal with. Because in Acts, we still try to get the church, boy, back on when they was all on what? One of, see, Satan said, I do not want them to get on one accord. Any human who get on one accord together. You see this in the world. We get groups and corporations that have one central vision and goal, they create cars. They create planes. Why? They don't want the car. They make everybody collective in here. We are, this is what we do. This is our purpose. How much more are the people of God? You know, I know in our world, we think the United States is the world. <laughs> it's our world. But, you know, God looking at 8 billion people on the planet. <laughs> you know, that he may go through a womb. You know, and we talked about that last week, which, which I believe that Everybody, when they go to the room, he says, I knew you for your mother womb. He wasn't just talking about the saved ones. He's talking about the unsaved ones, too. All right? So I believe in the book of life. And he's going to blot it out when, if they don't accept Christ later on. But just because that's why we try to redeem them, you know, and save them and intercede for them. You know, we don't ever know who's going to come, you know, except the son. But that's just another way. The mystery of the prayer and the spirit. That's what we're going to talk about next week. But you're going to really love because now I'm going to talk about just what tongues are tonight and define them. But next week, I'm talking about, okay, now here's the purpose of the one. And this is what it really does. Just like I told you, I did, when we was in the library, I did a nice session on it, but I never put it out about what happens when you clap your hands, what happens when you kneel, what happens when you hold your hand this way versus this way. In the Bible, they got instructions for all that. You know that? God don't put that in there for nothing. You know, and when we did what we did, uh, musicology, we show some, it shows some of the, the positions, just like in yoga, some of the stuff, the position, just the position alone, how it channel energy and shoots up. So that's what, that's what we learn. So we don't stay like when we're doing this, you know, people, to some people believe that we are actually doing like the seraphims who are over here watching God's holiness. And Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit, the silence, the rivers of water. We like the Holy Spirit. We build another ark when we raise our hand, you know, and praise like that. Why do you think some churches don't even like, we don't raise our hand here? See? You think you think it's just a no? It's a fight. <laughs> lift your hands, everybody. We don't lift my hand. I'm my hand. See? <laughs> yeah. Police, police make it here get up. But I don't. I don't get up for no one. You will if you go to court. <laughs> All rise. <laughs> Praise God. Let me get into this message. You guys got me killed. The mysteries of prayer and the spirit is gonna be awesome uh, next week. So don't miss that. And then we're gonna get into his gifts. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, which is another one they try to mess up. Um, but all the gifts they try to mess up. And, and like I said, it's like any other thing. Anything can be abused. But God says, be given you to know the mysteries and understanding and knowledge. Understand what well, I understand when somebody walking in the flesh and walking in the spirit. I understand when somebody's authentic and not authentic. I understand if, if that's the word and not the word. That's, that's up to you. That God's going to hold you accountable for that. That's why he says, man, everybody should what, study to show yourself what? Approved to who? To who? To God. Not man. You ain't trying to impress me with no scriptures. God says, you study to show yourself approved, for you can hold, God's going to hold you accountable for the word, for when somebody said, God, I would, but the pastor told me to do something crazy. He told me to go rob a bank in the name of Jesus. See? You know, I was just being obedient to the pastor. Not if you study your word to show yourself approved unto who? God. You know better. You know better. <laughs> so I don't like all them excuses. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. No. You, you, everything's supposed to be more confirmation, not just new information all the time. You know, so you should, you should read the word. Oh, I was studying that last year. Oh, that's what that really means. That's my job is expound on what you already know sometimes. Not you always just hand feed you. You know, that's how coach gets started. I don't want you to sit around here. I want you to learn some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be checked too. I got the Holy Spirit. I got my wife. You know, you know. I, I, I but I, I want you guys to grow. You guys got gifts, and we gonna find it out in this series. If our uh, ministry is talking about, we talking about being filled and baptized by the Holy Spirit.
People get, I think a lot of people confuse when God says, and you shall have the Holy Spirit shall be inside you, right? We know this part. The scriptures we read it already through the other series. But the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is the action by which God takes up permanent residence in the body of believers in Jesus Christ. He takes a permanent residence in the body. We already went over this. But the reason why I'm repeating it is because it's the difference between the Holy Spirit indwelling you. Remember I pulled the chocolate? And it's settled at the bottom. It's indwell. Why? It's living inside the body now. See? But when I stirred that bad boy, that was baptized. See, that's what people don't understand. That's the part they get mixed up. They say, but they're right. All the Holy Spirit that you ever going to get... You got it when you got born again. They write about that fact. I don't need no more experience all at once. Yeah, but you ain't starting. See? And remember, the Holy Spirit, the, the, the milk represented your flesh. Me stirring it up represents the Holy Spirit taking over your flesh. So if you don't stir it up, you got more flesh working than spirit. Oh, come on, somebody up in here. <laughs> and that's what's wrong with you. <laughs> you know? Sitting up here, because people who like to be in control, they realize the only thing that wants to control you is your flesh. The Holy Spirit wants to guide you. He don't even want to control you. He don't want to make you a slave. He wants to say, I'm a legion guide you to all truth. But the flesh wants to control. I mean, control. You know, <laughs> control. That's all he wants is to control you. And people who like to be in control of everything, these are the people that normally don't get baptized. God says in James, he says the tongue is the most ruling thing on the planet. Who can control it? Who can know it? Guess who can? The Holy Spirit. When you surrender to it and you force it and start speaking the tongue, you have to surrender to that. That's why most people don't do it. People like being controlled. I do this. I do this. I got this. I got my way. I do it like this. I did. I praise this way. I sing this way. I go this far. I'm going as far as I want. I'm like, dude, you can forget it. You never experience what I experienced. When I was like that, and I was all, I'm from the Baptist church. You know, we didn't do a whole bunch of stuff. We sing, we sing songs. We like praise, worship. Nah, not so much because you got to get really get deep. <laughs> you know. And I remember the first time God flowed me. Get on your face. Flow me and had me crying like a baby. Teach you something. Surrender. I want all of you. I want every every inch. I want all of you or none of you. Bring it. See, and that's what you got. You got to get rid of yourself. What we're talking now is the supernatural. When I have my little line up here and I say, hey guys, this is the kingdom of God. This is the kingdom of God. Y'all be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have the government, uh-huh. And, and religion, definitely. And y'all looking at me, I'm like, look, I'm trying to get you to come up here. And up here, discernment is what you're going to need. Faith is what you're going to need. Surrender, 100%, you're going to need. You cannot hold on to your flesh and try to get up here. Come up here. I need total surrender. And God said, playtime's over now. You see how dark the world's getting? You turn on TV, people dying, shot, killed, accident, on purpose, homicide. It don't matter. You need protection. You need to know how to operate in this thing. You can't be religious like most people. God's in control. The straight bullet hits you. Bam. Yeah, he in control. <laughs> you know? And then they'll make up something stupid. Well, he must want another angel. No, we are higher than angels. We made the image of God. You know, they just make up all kinds of crazy religious stuff. You know, like, I ain't got time for that. And then I believe sitting like, man, you guys are spooky crazy. Because they know they don't, they don't make, not only don't make no sense, they ain't even making faith in the kingdom. Because <laughs> that's not true. I said, could you find me a scripture where he said he needed another angel and you're an angel? See? Is it, could, could you find me a scripture where he says God is control? When all those scriptures talking about, no, no, you do it. <laughs> you know? So where all this stuff come from? Satan putting the airways and people just pick up with their little antennas, their little fleshly antenna, and they pick it up, and then they start spreading it for them. Don't worry about it, brother. We know all things work out for those that are good because God's going to start mixing scriptures with that mess. <laughs> Y'all <Yeah>, take coach. <laughs> it's just a hot mess. You know what I'm saying? Stop mixing God's holy scripture with your craziness. Because it don't work. <laughs> you just is lost. You are lost coin. That's what you are. You have value. You're in the house, but you still lost. 
Praise God. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit with whom you were sealed. See? He's already there. On the, to the day of redemption. They'll tell you, man, watch yourself. You might lose your salvation. I'm gonna, I'm sealed to win. To what? Redemption. <laughs> Everybody know what day of redemption is, I hope. <laughs> hey, come on. This, this is what I'm saying. When you, this is the confidence you can have. <laughs> See? When you know your scriptures. You know, if you didn't have no come, you don't know no word. People come like, man, you know, people say, you know, they say in the Bible, they say this. No, I don't. No, I don't. I hear stuff all the time. I don't say that. And if it does, it's not talking about that. See, it's time for you to know the word. God, people died for this. You know, people died for years. They have Bible burning seminars and God says, my word shall not depart. It's going to be there. And it's still here. It's still here. Look at that. Watch this. We as believers, we call this the born again experience. This is what we call born again. Man, you need to get born again. What do we mean by that? Man, you need to get accept Jesus Christ. He says, those who believe upon his name alone, and the Holy Spirit come, and he will dwell in you. He'll come and dwell in you. You need the Spirit to be born again. All right? I wanted to add something to you guys. Oh, I, I can do it here. I put the chart back up here for you guys to understand uh, last week what happens. What's the difference between the baptisms? There's many baptisms, the Bible says. Baptisms, the plural. So here we show them saying, salvation, what kind of baptism? Well, the Holy Spirit uh, takes you and salvation, and he baptizes you in Christ. And Paul says, you're in Christ, you're in Christ. We talked about that last, last week. For what? The forgiveness of sins. Then, what a baptism? A lot of people say, oh, that's just a public confession. That's a part of it. That's a part of it. You remember when uh, the guy, uh, when um, the law giver came to Jesus? Nick at night, we call him, Nicodemus. He came at night and says, Jesus says, don't you know, you keeper of the law, don't you know you must be born again in order for that to happen? And he's like, what? Can a man go back and return his mom home? And then, you know, what the scriptures say? I think I read it down. It says, Jesus asked to say this. This is John 3 and 5. It says, Jesus said, really? Verily, truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless you are born of water and of spirit. You're born of water and you're of spirit. First part, Holy Spirit does what? He takes you and he dumps you in, in Christ. So that's the spirit. You go back into the water here. You know, um, the Jewish people know this stuff. When Jesus was uh, on the resurrection, they took Jesus and we always saying, well, God wanted the family, so he sowed the seed, called Jesus in the ground. And he rose up and he grew out all the body. The church was developed, whatever, the ecclesia, all right? Well, same thing here. When you go into the water, we bring you down the water. When we bring you up, guess what you do? You break the water again, just like giving birth. See, you went down in the grave, you came up and you broke the water. Are you coming through your new birth canal again? as you broke water, as you did when you first did with your mom. Because we all came through the woman. Mm -hmm. Except Jesus. I mean, except Jesus did too. But not by the man. So yeah, you break the water again. That's another symbol of it. They knew this. You know, but sometimes they got sprinkled. And some Ecclesiastes of God said, I will sprinkle some water and make it clean. The water is about the cleansing. I told you, he washed their feet. And he cleansed them then. He said, you're already clean by the words that I've spoken. So the word, that's why I told you it comes in three things. I'm always on you guys about that. Don't forget that. You're going to need that information about the three formats of word. You know, see, water, and light. All right? And Jesus told them, you are cleansed by the words that I have spoken of you. Not by the water. That's why he says, I got, just got to wash your feet. Why? That was natural. Because you've been walking the dirty road. We're going to get the dirt off you. Wasn't nothing spiritual about that. He says your whole body is already cleansed by the words that have been spoken on you as we walk these roads. And you receive it. So you're cleansed. So that's why we hear, how can they hear without a proclaimer or a preacher? And we speak the words about salvation, the gospel of Christ, the cross. And somebody received it. Really? Yes, brother, if you want to accept Jesus into your heart and you believe that Jesus died and rose for you, you can be saved. And you receive that. See? You receive that word. And you have to receive it. So, And the last one, like I said, most people get confused with once you're in Christ, God's going to do something with you. He says, I got you now. You're mine. Guess what I'm going to do with you? I'm going to I'm gonna dump you into the Holy Spirit. I'm going to dump you into the Holy Spirit. That's why he says, one going to come. He says, one going to come. I dump you in water. For one's going to come behind me, and he's going to baptize you. What's his name? Jesus. He's going to baptize you in what? In the Holy Ghost and with fire. 
got to get to understand this stuff and quit letting people just mess it all up. <laughs> you know, it's, it, you have to know how it works. And with that being said, now we can go into our message about tongues. That most people, oh man, everybody don't speak in tongues. I don't believe in speaking in tongues stuff. I have heard that so, so much. And me and my wife got our own testimony. She might tell you one day how it all happened. I'm pretty sure um, I might wind up speaking it for both of us. Because we got filled on the same day. Not indwell, filled. All we call baptized. Okay? Uh, the first filling, anyway. Because you got to get filled again. Watch this. Speaking in tongues, let's look at Mark 16. says this. And these signs will follow those who believe. Who are they going to follow? Those who what? Those who believe. Those who what? Believe. So what about the scripture I put up before? What if some don't believe? <laughs> See? See? Will they make God's word of no effect? Now this is Jesus talking. He says, now these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Jesus said this. You know? But yeah, we got a lot of people saying we don't, we don't, we don't believe in that. If you're in one of those passed away churches, I feel sorry for you. Passed away churches mean like uh, tongues passed away, healing passed away, prophet. You in the passed away church, ah, uh, ah, uh, you hurt. You know why? Because the same kingdom of darkness, the same adversary that was down here with Jesus when all this stuff was given as weapons and tools to combat him, he is still here and he's good at his job. Now, one reason I don't agree with all, I know better than that because my daddy would never do that to me. Leave me down here. I'll never leave you forsake you. First of all, he's here. And he's not taking no tools that get as effective tools like that. But Satan wants them gone. He's like, get rid of those thrones. They're doing so much damage. Oh, Lord, don't let them start raising their hands. Oh, tell them to stop clapping. Oh, see? <laughs> In our church, we don't clap. In our class, we're more studious. In our church, see? Powerless. And you think you're doing it. Satan doing it to you. I said, what the scriptures say? It got a scripture for raising your hands. It tells you the way you kneel, the way you bow, this position, this position. I went over this stuff. It's in Hebrew. When they first developed worship again. Because they already got, you know, eternal worship going on in, in heaven all the time. Satan was over worship and he knows what it does. So he's trying to shut worship down here. Worship is a lifestyle. It's not just a song and dance. But it's, it's part of your power package. That's what God says. You can start praying. If you feel it heavy and, and watch this, and even suicidal, start praising God and watch that spirit get out of there and run away from you. Because it's a spirit of depression. It's a spirit of suicide. It's a spirit of sickness, disease. You can tell it to go. You know, so you have to learn to use the weapons. But they'll shut it all down. You want the pastor with you? Like, man, you need to get out of there with the quickness. Because I'm telling you, that stuff's gonna kill you. You need some power in these last days, and we don't have time for that stuff. God said, God tell you right now, and they going to speak with them tongues. They're, oh, yeah, yeah, Jesus said it, but it passed away. Like, could you find that in Scripture? They got one Scripture in there that God says, when he come back and set up the earthly kingdom, that all these things will stop. Earthly kingdom's not here. <laughs> okay? You know, and they try to use that. Like, we know all this is going to stop. They don't need it. Then he will be with them. You know? <laughs> That's the same thing. I say, religious Pharisees, that's the same thing he was doing with Jesus. I'm like, uh, do, you, do you guys not do this and do that and do that? He's like, all that stuff is for me. I'm here with them. They don't need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> that's what religion do, man. They forget the whole point. The whole point is that that's for me. But now that I'm here, you don't have to do that right now. But when I'm gone, yeah, you can crank it up again. <laughs> you know <laughs> You don't need it then. I'm gone. But you don't need it now because the Holy Spirit never leaves. I'll never leave you forsake you. So you don't need it no more. He closed that Old Testament stuff off so bad that people can't, I can't get over it. They're still hanging out there. He killed it. He gave me so many examples so I'm going to kill it. It's a bad covenant. I can't wait to get rid of it. That's why people thought God was bad. God himself is so bad. Man, you play with God, man. He opened up the ground on you because it was a covenant they had that they agreed to, that they actually wanted. And God said, that's a bad covenant, guys. Okay. Y'all tie my hands. This is what y'all want to do? Y'all want kings? Y'all want me to talk to one person? You, you want me to use the, the covenant that they were using back in that day where I become the, the, the judge, jury, and executioner of the covenant? You know, you don't want that. Because you know, I forever watch over my and make sure that it so he had to fulfill it 100%. That's why he wasn't like, oh, you're careless. You didn't care of that music. Uh, where they at? Get him. Uh, pick up the song. Why? 
The words been spoken. One hundred said he's gonna do it. That's why they did. Well, oh my God, they have mercy back there. Man, God, they have mercy. Thank God for Jesus. Jesus, I got more mercy. No, we got a different covenant, a better one. You would been saying that about Jesus too if he had the same covenant with you. Because if that word was spoken, it's going to be executed. We got to understand this stuff. Old covenant gone. None of that stuff replies anymore. We got Jesus. He's forever with us now. That's why he was so happy. Oh, he was. He's the joy of going to the cross. Would you joy about going to the cross? Whipped, beat, executed on the cross. He, the joy. Why? Look at me and you. We got access to heaven anytime we want to. We got weapons and tools to take out Satan anytime we feel like it. The only thing we know is he's trying to do is keep you ignorant of it. He's trying to keep you ignorant. Make sure nobody don't have nobody speak on this stuff or talk about this stuff. Because it's going to call a conviction start stirring up. Because I'm just speak to something that's already in you. If you're born again, all I got to do is speak the truth only. It's up to you. After that, the Holy Spirit is going to be dealing with you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Watch this. So Jesus said we're supposed to speak and tell him. Let's look at this. Let's go deeper. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And Jesus said, all who believe will speak with new tongues. All. How many going to believe? All, all. all who believe. He said, these people now, all who believe. See, it dawned on you that you got some believers who believe in Jesus Christ to go to heaven that they don't believe other scriptures. And you run into them. It confuses babies. It confuses unbelievers. But those who are mature in Christ, we get it. We understand, like, that's why God says. You understand how God tells us, because some of the disciplinary stuff he tells us, um, when you really read the scripture and how he says how to deal with people who are acting up, when it comes to sinners, he seems like he gives them more grace and mercy because they don't know no better. But if you know better and, and those who continue on in this stuff, he says, from such turn away. He never says turn away from an unbeliever. That's why he says he called Jesus a wine bibber because he hung out with the sinners. Why? They don't know nothing. They don't know no better. But you, lawgiver, keeper, people who know my scriptures, you know better. You are now overriding your God. Once you get away from people who override their will, who know this, because that's the spirit. Once you do that, it comes callous. The poker iron. Remember talking about that? You have seared your conscience. And the spirit, you grieve in the Holy Spirit. Watch this. And the spirits are always transferable. That's why your parents are worried about what kids you hang around. Spirits are always transferable. You get somebody who's a whole marker. Oh, he's just my friend. I know he do all that, but I ain't about that. Hang around him long enough. You spend the majority of your time, you can become a whole marker. You know what I'm saying? It's a spirit. That's why you see God. So people don't like the real Bible stuff about talking about from such time. Paul was wilded. What is I hear somebody doing this? And you're doing this. And they're fooling somebody else's wife or husband. He says, I already rebuke him. I'm not even there. You guys better get him out. Put him outside the church and turn him over to who? Satan. And when Satan get done with him, you be ready to receive your brother when he repent. See, this is real discipline. God's trying to keep you pure, the body pure. Why? This is how we fight our battles. This is how we can get on one accord. You can't get on one accord if we got people playing around the church. That's just why it's so hard for the spirit to move because we got carnal Christians spread all over the churches and we try to get the spirit to come here and move and they sit around like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're just going to have a church. We're going to go there and they're going to go and drink home, drink their beer, go to their ball games, call it a day. They ain't been the most engaged. That's why I said I'm not hooked on numbers. I'm looking for some pure in heart. That's why Jesus even said, let those who have a, to what? Hear. With the spirit, yeah. Let those have an ear to what? Hear. What I explain hearing is what? People who want to hear with the expectation that they're actually going to do. Be you doers of the word, not what? Hears only. See, that's the kind of hearing he talked about. That's why he specified, like, God, Jesus is the most positive person in the world. But crowds he spoke to, let those who have an ear to hear. I'm like, wow, Jesus, everybody going to hear right? Nope. He knew that. Watch this, 1 Corinthians 12, 28 says this, And God has set some in the church. This is Paul writing again to the Corinthian church. Corinthian church was huge. They had over 50,000 members in that church. That's a huge church, right? That's because <clears throat> he says, I said some apostles, secondly, prophets, thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, and diversities of tongues. Since we're talking about tongues, I'll underline that. God said some. The scripture said he said some. Not all. Some. All right? Remember that. And then in the, in the next verse it says, Now are all apostles. 
It's rhetorical. It means no. Are all prophets? Because you always say he said some, not all. No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. Do all have gifts of healing? No. Do all speak in tongues? Ah, gotcha. I don't know, Pastor, I say operate because we're talking about tongues. Ha, 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 gotcha. <laughs> do all interpret? No. See, but do all speak in tongues. This is the kind of stuff that people lift up and they don't understand. That's why you get the pastors and all you get and make sure you get to understand. All right, first of all, they just take tongues as if to one tongue because all tongues. You know better than that. You don't do that with life. Everything's not, <laughs> everything's not always the same. So watch this. Four types of tongues. First of all, there's tongues, what we call tongues for a sign. These are, these are two public tongues, and then there's two private tongues. Public tongues is what? When you speak tongues, you speak in the openly and you speak into men. So it's a public tongue. Inter then there's tongues for interpretation. I'll just try them later. There's another public tongue. This one, the, one of the, well, this is one of the nine gifts of the Spirit. You're still talking to man. They're public, both public. One's for a sign, and one's for interpretation. Now right now, if one's for a sign, you have some people like, how are you speaking in tongues? What are you speaking in tongues for a sign? He says, how are you speaking in tongues you're not interpreting? So you're already messing up right there? You don't know which one's what. See? But I'm explaining. <clears throat> Y'all got that? Uh -huh. All right, here we go. All right, now, I'm going to drop you back in what he was saying. Our all apostle, all, this was the context that he was saying this. I just showed you two types of tongues, and they both was public. Here's the context he was saying this. Are we all apostles and teachers? No, no, no. Are we all miracles? Nope. All right. Do we all have gifts of healing? Nope. Do we all speak in tongues for public interpretation? No. Do we all interpret? No. He's talking about those two public tongues right there. Now watch this. Let's get in the scripture and see. First Corinthians tells you. Therefore, tongues are for a what? No, I go one. Not those who believe, but for what? Who is it for? The sign for who? It's for unbelievers. It's for unbelievers. The sign is for unbelievers. I have heard many of, uh, uh, I have not witnessed some of this stuff, but I've seen certain people say they've seen uh, uh, people come in, they start uh, speaking. You know, sometimes we speak, and we're talking about private tongues in a minute, but we'll speak during praise and worship, and people came here and seen us going for it in praise and worship. Like, man, that church is, oh, oh they speak in the tongues. Don't they know they're the interpreter? No. No, this, this is for a sign. This is not the one you're talking about here. This is one for a sign when you get to interpret. That's the one you need to interpret for. So that they just lift one thing out of another and call it the same thing. Now watch this. It says for a sign for those for unbelievers. We have some people who actually came and speak tongues for a sign. But I'm not going to use it because I wasn't personally there, but I'm going to use the one that the Bible gave you. Y'all remember the day of Pentecost? Mm -hmm. And I told you he got baptized. Now I didn't do all the baptized in the Holy Spirit. He came out there boldly and started talking. And he said, how be it that we see you guys talking in our native language and we from all over the country? One of y'all talking French, one of you guys talking Spanish, one of you guys talking, you know, whatever language it was. He says, we hear all you guys talking like that. that was for a what? Sign. For who? A unbeliever. All right. So that's where we get that one from. So we already seen songs four times. And here's Paul tell, talked about that. One thing about the Bible and Paul in their letters and the style that they write in, Jesus did it also. They'll talk about several things in one sentence. And that's why people get confused. Because they'll switch on you in a heartbeat. You know? <laughs> and you'll see this right here. Because right, watch this. In the next verse, watch this. Therefore, in the next verse, same talk. Therefore, if the whole church comes together, we come together in one place and all speak with tongues. Watch this. And there come in those who are uninformed or unbelievers. All right? Will they not say that you are out of your mind? Wait a minute. You're the one that just said that we do that. It's a sign for what? He's talking. <laughs> See, he's talking about another tongue here. <laughs> he's talking about another tongue. I'm like, wait a minute. Now he's talking about interpretation. See, he's talking about the in, in, in interpreter right now. Watch this. Coming to those who said uninformed. Like, hey, Paul, you tripping. You just got your saying. In the same mouth. In the same scriptures. One scripture over, he's saying, oh, when you come together, and you know, tongues are for a sign for unbelievers. Well, what if unbelievers come in and see you talking? They're going to think you're crazy. Now, I'm thinking you're crazy, Paul, but I understand what he's talking about right here. And I told you that it happened in scriptures with these guys. Because Jesus did in Matthew 24. He talked about several things, the end times, 
what's going to happen, destruction of the church, uh, uh, when you're going to suffer. He's talking about all that all in, in one sentence, and people just like lost their mind on it. They don't know how the end time's going to end because they didn't understand how Jesus was talking here. You know, so watch this. I come back to this. Don't worry, guys. I'm, I'm going to explain it a little bit better. Right now, I'm introducing you to the third one is personal prayer. This is the one that we all have. The first two was public. You speak out openly. Uh, I was talking about the one for interpreter. The guy said, hey, uh, you hear this woman speaking. And he says, you speak great French and perfect dialogue. I never heard that. She's like, I don't speak in French. She's like, but you were speaking it then. See, that was the unknown tongue, unknown to who? The person who was speaking, but not to the person who heard. See, that's another tongue. That's why I say diverse tongues when I show, put that line up there. Diversities of tongues. Many different types of tongues. People take one and run with it. All right? Uh, you remember I talked about my uniform, all, some are known with the medals? That's what you got in the body of Christ now. Some believe in some of the scripture. You know, not all, or none. Well, that's what they do. They're going to do that. I say, but you, we, I told you, we believe all word. All word is inspired by God. And we believe the word. So I don't play around with that no more. And, that, and, and that's all it is. It's like the court of law. All Satan has to do is not get you so much like, I don't believe, it's, I don't understand. It's called reasonable doubt. And it shuts it all down. James tell you that. And if you have any doubt in your what heart, you shall not what? Receive anything from the Lord. All you have to do is cause reasonable doubt. That's why, that's why Jesus folks tell you, meditate day and night, and then all your ways will be so you gotta meditate on this thing. For when the doubt comes, like uh-uh, 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 I'm so stirred up and filled with the Holy Spirit, it's bouncing right off that, bouncing right off that. I'm so convinced and fully persuaded. So that's why you see Paul, uh, you see Peter coming out of there, you know, he's behind locked doors like this before, born again, but locked up. But when he got baptized, unlock them doors. See? You ain't gonna care about what nobody say then. Okay, what you say? What? But what? <laughs> That's what feeling does. You see, boldness is what they started talking about after that. Boldness, boldness, boldness. They already knew who they were. They knew the power and authority they had. They said, boldness, Lord, boldness, boldness. Give me boldness to go out there and do that now. Because they knew who they were. And it's time for us to know who we are in Christ. For us, it's 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. Now, who prays here? The spirit. What spirit? Your born again spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to pray for you now. But my mind is what? This is why people don't like it. People who like to be in control. Ah, it sounds crazy. It sounds like I'm talking like a baby. See, your mind is unfruitful. They don't know what the heck is going on. Why? Because it's used to being in control. You got to get rid of that. God's going to make you surrender. That's why St. James says, the tongue is such a ruling person who can tame it. The Holy Spirit can. That let you know that finally, he says, not rule. So when you submit yourself and let the Holy Spirit tame that tongue, oh man, that's when you say, oh, I've truly surrendered now. Because you have turned your tongue over to the Holy Spirit. It says the Spirit will pray for you. But my mind will be unfruitful. I don't know what I'm saying. Man, what you just you're saying? I don't know. But the other scriptures tell you, it says you're praying answers to what? Mysteries. Telling you what you're doing. You're praying answers. He said, God says, no, you might not know, but this is what happened. I'm getting some insight. When you pray like that and you don't know what's going on, you're praying answers to mysteries. See? Watch this. Uh, so what? Verse 15. So what shall I do? This is Paul talking. He says, so I pray with my spirit. That means I'm going to pray with, I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm praying in it. But I will also pray with an understanding. He said, I'm going to pray with an understanding in English. Somebody said to me, hey man, I got a prayer in the I said, what is it? He's going to tell me with an understanding. I'm going to pray with an understanding. And then sometimes, like, I don't know what's going on with you. I just feel in my spirit so wrong, but I'm just starting praying this Holy Spirit. You know, nah. But see right here, the Jews says about that, 120. Why are you going to do that here? And I will sing with my spirit. See, you can start singing with the, in the spirit also, and then you can sing with understanding, just like we do here in the English. So when we go and praise and worship, that's what we do. See, if you come here and join us, you see us praying in the Holy Spirit. You see us praying in English and word whole nine yards, you know, because we are understanding. We got to understand what that does in the airwaves. In the invisible realm, we're causing things. We're praying answers. To it might be my own answer, somebody else's. Now watch this, Jude. Here's why I watch this. I don't know. That's some funny stuff. Watch what Jews say about that funny stuff. 
Jude one twenty says, But ye, beloved, building yourselves up in the most, first you build yourself in the most holy faith. When you pray in the Spirit, you pray in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You build yourself up. You see pastor in the corner going for it. I'm over in the corner doing my thing, praising God, lifting hands, praying in the spirit. Why? I'm building myself up. You know, even if you have an interview, you learn the spirit, you got answers. You go into a board. Remember why I do it all the time. When we was working in the corporate world, man, you need to go in that bathroom and tear it up. Get you some prayer in the spirit. Get some answers. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I don't know what I'm saying, but hey, but by the time I get there, they hey, hey, he, what do you think about this? Well, you know, I'm thinking it's natural. No, you need to build yourself up. You got an answer now. <laughs> you know, where they come from? Oh, man, they was all impressed by what I said. Can you build yourself up? Told you, you drive to work, commute, man. You be, you, that's why you won't get fed. Pray in the Holy Spirit while you drive to work. Not wasted time. You won't understand what you're saying, but trust me. Trust the word. Don't trust me. Trust the word. The word says right here, you are praying in the most holy faith. It also says in Jude 120 that you are building yourself up. Okay? So don't trust me. Trust the word. That's what I do. I trust the word. I told people, I believe God and I believe the word. That's the only thing we did. They just go to church. So there's a difference. <laughs> Praise God. You got to stop just going to church. You got to start believing God and believing God's word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Number four, tongue or intercession. Tongue for intercession. Tongues for intercession. Mm. This is the one. Let's look at Romans 8, 26. It says this. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Well, what's our weakness? We do not know what we ought to pray for. We don't know what to pray for. We really don't. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans, or groans and moans in the different interpretations, but by praying in the Spirit. He says we have a weakness. We don't always know what to pray for. But when you pray in the Holy Ghost, He says the Spirit's going to pray for you. It's called the Spirit of Intercession. You know, uh, sometimes people give us, hey man, uh, we want you to get a text. Hey, guys, start praying. Uh, so and so just got an accident. They ain't got no details. We don't know heart, limb, leg, nothing. First thing I started doing was praying in the Holy Ghost. Because I do not know what to pray for. But the Spirit does. See? Also, this one right here, uh, prayer or intercessions, uh, big time. This is the most unselfish thing. You're praying in the Spirit. If you just sit there and pray in the Spirit, God will give you answers. And He's trying to wake people up, and three in the morning, you find yourself praying. God woke me up and said, I need to pray. I don't know what I need to pray for. Pray in the Spirit. That's what you need to pray for. And so sometimes God will let you know that's what you was praying for. It'll come back later on that day, later that week, you're like, that's what I was praying for. Right there. Because why? Because it's first close and confident. Like, man, somebody was praying for man like, yep, that's what I was praying for. You see this awesome gift that Satan wants to rob us from with all that crazy confusion stuff. Satan is the author of confusion. Don't listen to that stuff. This is something that our Father loves us so much. He says, I'll never leave you forsaken when the Holy Spirit, He, God said He so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Then Jesus said, I, I love you enough that I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Then the Holy Spirit comes and says, and I got some gifts I want to give you also. See? Every single one of them is constantly givers. That's the kingdom in heaven way. That's why God wants you should be a giver. You're going to be a giver. You live to give. That's how you make your living, by giving. You're giving time, treasure, you know. You're giving out love. This is how you make your living, by giving. That's how I make my living, by giving. I give myself away to everybody. I use my gifts, I use my talents, I use my time and love, my wisdom, my knowledge, my understanding from worldly stuff to godly stuff. You make your living by giving. That's, what he that's how heaven operates. Nothing stagnated in heaven. It's a constant move. They call it currency for a reason. You got to create a current. You got to keep going. You got to keep it moving. You know, so don't let nobody tell you about these songs. There's, like I said, there's too public. And it's too private. You pray in the Holy Spirit, build yourself up. There's one thing it does, it lift yourself up. Um, and you pray in the most holy faith, because you know we need some faith. All right? And then you got the intercession one. Uh, my wife, uh, yeah, for some reason, I don't know, guys. Uh, sometimes I, I have some battles in my dreams, and I'm always fighting demons. I'm always fighting demons. My wife had called me several times, baby, you was praying in the Spirit. I don't remember none of it. 
But at least my body knows I'm, I'm submissive even in my sleep enough to blah, 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 blah just going for it. She said, you're praying in the spirit, man. You remember your thing? I'm like, nope. See, I, and, but I remember I was dreaming. <laughs> I remember the dream I was fighting some demons, you know, uh, and demonic attacks. And then, you know, uh, the spirit realm, I remember some people like to just to tell you all the time, don't play around in the spirit realm unless you know what you're doing. Because uh, when you go in the spirit realm, remember Satan is a spiritual being also. All right? So that's why some people play around with Ouija boards and all these crosses and stuff and all, uh, all the little signs and symbols. They don't know what they're doing. They think they play, think it's fun in games. You're like, dude, you open up yourself to attack. You know, uh, at least us, those who are believers, we're protected because the Holy Spirit is indwelled in us. Whether you've been baptized or filled yourself up or not, it doesn't matter. He's still there. He's sealed. So he can't come and get you. He cannot possess you. But he can't oppress you. And that's just on our side. He's just constantly putting pressure and demons on you. And since remember, if you ain't stir this up, it's like stir, that's like he says, it's like the anointing. It breaks the yoke. Get off me, you know? But if you ain't stirred it up, remember the white milk represents your flesh. You have more flesh than your spirit activated at the time. See? So if you stir it up, you have more spirit than your flesh activated at the time. So you can resist a lot of stuff. So that's why he tells you to put the whole armor of God on that you may resist what? The principalities, the wiles, the, all this spiritual stuff in the spirit realm. He says that put your whole armor and the last part of that armor is what? And following my brother, praying in the spirit word always. The last piece of the armor. Or oh, Iron Man, I call it. <laughs> is that power button? <laughs> so if you don't pray in the spirit, you just got the whole Iron Man suit. But it ain't power. <laughs> All right, it can, it, can, it can deflect some darts and stuff like that, but just think of his power. Because when the Iron Man gets a power suit, he don't sit there and just like, oh yeah, I'm powered up. Just just sit here. No, he's gonna take something out. <laughs> That's why I call it what spiritual war warfare. <laughs> yeah, and that that war is not gonna be fair to the enemy if you power it up. Because what greater he is what in. Than he does in the world. So that ain't going to be fair to him. That's why he's trying to shut it down. I don't believe in all that speaking in the tongue. I don't believe in no power. That's what it's all about. I want a powerless little religious church. Because they cannot do anything to my kingdom unless they have power. And this is one of the power tools that God gives us. Diversity of tongues. Too public, you know, and too private. And they all have a purpose. And people confuse it all. And they want to shut you down. This is what Jesus meant by religious people. He told them, the strongest rebuke. You yourself do not want to enter into my system called the kingdom of God. And you're hindering the other people. Woe unto you. Strong rebuke. Because that's what they do. I said, look at this. If you don't want to do this, just don't go and hinder some of God's people who's trying to get into this thing. Because they realize they need some help and they need some power. They don't just want to suffer. You know, so we're not sitting around here trying to be a victim. We don't hear no victim talk. We're victorious. In Christ, because He, God loves us enough to get, equip us, gave us some tools, and I want us to know. So next week we're gonna talk more about. First, I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna show you what these guys. Oh yeah, I gotta show you this. I got five minutes. I'm gonna show you this. I got five minutes. Watch this. Acts 19:24 says, um, "This is this is Paul, and this will happen to him because this happened to me." It says, "Watch this." Apollo was at Corinth, and Paul took off the road to the interior to arrive at Ephesus. There he found some disciples. All right? He found some disciples. Now, him and Apollo split. He went to Ephesians and, and uh, Apollo went to Corinth. All right? Watch this. He found some disciples. He said to them, Have you received the Holy Ghost? Watch this since you believe. You know, me, I was born again since I was a kid. Somebody could have came and asked me that same question right there. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Now, wait a minute. You see, of course I received the Holy Ghost. I'm born again. No, he's indwelled. This receive right here, he's talking about the baptism. Have you got stirred up? Watch this. He said, he said to them, we have not so much as heard whether there was any Holy Ghost. Mm. How many churches you go to and they say the same thing? Mm. With the pastor away churches. We don't believe that. So they, we didn't even know it was a Holy Ghost. We didn't know nothing about that. I was the same way. I didn't know that until I went to church and started. I was like, what, you, what, what, what is this? What, what, what y'all What's that funny stuff y'all doing? 
I ain't never, I was, I was born again since a kid. I came in as an adult and never heard about it, you know. So this ain't nothing new. So Paul asked them, then what baptism did you receive? Mm -hmm. They said, John's baptism, they replied. And he goes, oh. Paul said, oh, John's baptism is called for repentance from sin. That's born again. All right? He says, but John himself told the people to believe in the one who would come later, meaning Jesus. He says, oh, yeah, you, he baptized you that you believed in Jesus before you even got here. And just like we believe Jesus, we never seen him. All right? So we're both in the same boat. We're both going to see him physically. But you believe him. All right? Watch this. And, and it says, on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. How does that happen? Watch this. Remember I showed you the chart. They're already born again, so they're already in Christ. So why he says baptized in the name of Jesus, that means Jesus baptized them into the Holy Spirit right here. Watch this. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them. Because Jesus says, you are in me, guys. But you, you, how can they hear without what? A proclaimer. You gotta, somebody got to say it first. Faith come by yeah. hearing. So when somebody started talking about speaking in tongues, then the people picks it up. And the Holy Spirit said, that's me, that's me. Yeah, yeah, you, you need that. You need that. You need that. You need that. Somebody spoke it. And then you receive it, you know, and then it can happen. So and that's what happened here. These guys were already born again. They had been baptized even by John. Watch this. And when Paul laid his hand up on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spoke with what? Tongues and prophesied. The reason why I want you to read that scripture is because I say, hey, you're not new. This same thing has been happening. There's nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes. There, he said, and then he said, watch this. There were about 12 men in all, letting you know that all 12 received. For all the people saying, yeah, maybe three of them did it. No, all 12, there's 12 men, and all of them received it. Watch this. And he entered the synagogue. I had to throw this in just to mess with people. You know, I like this part. And he entered the synagogue. This is Paul. After he did that, got these guys filled. What did he preach about? He went three months boldly speaking. What did he talk about? Oh, my God. My favorite subject. The what? For three months. You're going to hear about this kingdom of God. <laughs> for three months. See, a lot, people don't understand us. I told you, everybody preached this message about the kingdom of God operation. This new stuff that we're doing, we don't have a clue. We don't have a clue. It's powerless. The kingdom of God comes with power. And say Christianity comes with power. Because when I start showing you the difference, you would think like people, are, what's wrong with me? I ain't got to go through this stuff no more, but if I show you the difference uh, of kingdom versus Christianity, you're like, man, they got to be on point. It'd be so far away. God says, you're here to change the earth. They say, no, uh -uh, we're here to escape. You know? Uh, you know? <laughs> God telling you, thy kingdom come, that will be on the earth. You know? Jesus, where you at? You're in control. Fix me. <laughs> you know? Totally opposite. This is why you don't see no power. Because they're not preaching the same message. You got to do the same thing Jesus says. The things I do, you do. So I got to do the exact same things he did. He let the Holy Spirit indwell in his body and let the Holy Spirit take over and lead and guide him to all truth. And he released by faith. Tree, die. Wind, stop. By faith he did this. And by faith he says the same things I do you can do also. See, that's a kingdom operation. That's what it's for. Mm -mm -mm. Let me close. Praise God. I'm like, uh, this is what we're closing on. The Bible says that we speak mysteries when we pray in the Spirit. We'll be talking about that next week. These mysteries does a lot. Watch this. Mystery is something that is difficult to understand because it's hidden from the natural mind. See, you pray in the unknown spirit, but your mind is unfruitful. See, it's difficult because you don't understand. You don't have to. All right? It says, but a mystery. A, a carnal Christian, that's one category, or unsaved person. Oh, same level. Of information about to be received here. What's the calling of Christian? Well, he, he accepted Jesus. He's been sealed to go to heaven. But he walks by the five senses just like the unsaved guy does. Thus I can touch it with my hands, see it. He's like, you know, he's like the other guy that didn't make it. But he's saved. He's like the believing thief on the cross, the believing one. So that's what the carnal Christian is. Uh, he leads by his flesh. Or his flesh is appetite. I don't say a person, you know, he, he have no choice. But that's why I told you the difference between the carnal Christian and the unsaved. I say how when you come to discipline, how God tells us to treat 
the carnal guy versus the unsaved, you'll give yourself like you're giving him more mercy and grace because he don't know nothing. But the person who knows better and carnal, the same way you do your kids, you know better. Mama, you on me? He did the same thing. He's young. He don't know. <laughs> well, you know better. <laughs> See, same stuff. Watch this. Here is what the uh, here is what I say. Attention to obey. Listen is just saying good word, Pastor. We don't do that here. I want to hit you right between the eyes. <laughs> All right. See, Pastor ain't here to give you no word to say. Oh, Pastor, the word you spoke just touched me. I want to hit you right between the eyes to wake you up. Because <laughs> that's where the mind's at, renewing our mind with the word of God. I want us to get this stuff. And I don't want Satan ever trying to confuse you and put you in a religious chain ever again. We are kings and queens. We have power. Our Father loves us. We have assignments. We're not here to change the earth. We're not here to get along. We're here to dominate. Take dominion to dominate. What? Your circumstance, everywhere you tread your feet, for that hour it's dominated. For that hour it's going to be dominated. And wherever you live, and whatever atmosphere you create, and you're releasing that dove, guys, you dominate the atmosphere. Because greater is he that is in you than anybody you come in opposition in this world. God loves us so much to do that. That's why I love God so much. I'm like, God, thank you. I thought for once when I was a religious nut, I thought, God, man, you ain't fair. Look at you. You leave me down here. This is hard. It was only hard because I was not operating in the kingdom. I was operating in religion. That's going to be a hard life. It's time to get an understanding. All you're getting what? Make sure you what? Yes. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the precious gift of the Holy Spirit who comes with gifts. And he gives us diverse of tongues. Two public ones that some people have access to and we all don't have access to. But we all have the private ones, Lord, that we can go and speak in heavenly language. We thank you, Lord. That we have access to heaven anytime we feel like it because of you and the Holy Spirit that you sent back. We pray right now, Lord, that Satan does not steal this word that came forth tonight. And everybody that heard it on the sound of my voice will get a full understanding. And that they'll pump up to go more and learn more about Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Give God a hand clap. God is good.